Hi, I'm Jeff Andre, an account executive with Arkiva. Thanks for joining us here in Arkiva Spotlight. Today, we're back to talk with Arkiva COO, Sujit Singh. Sujit's here to talk about his recent blog, Aggregation Mistakes When Reporting Forecast Accuracy. Sujit, thanks for joining me. Hey, Jeff, good to talk to you. Fantastic. Sujit, when discussing forecast accuracy with planners, you've always talked about the level the accuracy is calculated at. Can you touch on this? Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to measuring the accuracy, it's really no different from doing the forecast itself. Uh, and just like in forecast, if you are at a very high level, you basically cancel out all the pluses and the minuses. If you are at the very low level, you had so much noise in your data that your forecast is probably not going to be worth anything. Well, if you think like that when doing the forecast, and then come around and when it comes time to measuring the accuracy, you forget about it and measure it again, either at too high a level, then again, you will see everything will look very nice, uh, almost no error. On the other hand, if you measure it at very low a level, uh, you are going to see horrendous forecast, although it might not be reflective of the business process that you are trying to support. So depending on what you're trying to do with your forecast, there is an appropriate level at which you should measure the accuracy. And that's what I always try to teach people when I do my demand planning class. When you aggregate the data, how's, how does this benefit the accuracy? Well, uh, maybe the best way to answer that, Jeff, is through an example. So okay. let's take a you know very simple two product example. Let's say one product, uh, you forecasted nothing, so your forecast was zero, and you sold 100 units. Now that is a big error. Right. On the other hand, you had the other product, the second product, you forecasted 100, but sold nothing. So now you got two products where the error is 100 units, or you know, depending on how you calculate the percentages, 100%. On the other hand, if you combine the two, if you aggregate the data, guess what? You forecasted 100 and you shipped 100. So now your error is zero or 0%, zero mm -hmm. uh, which gives you a, a, a very rosy picture. And if you do that and make business decisions based on that, you might be over optimistic about what you're able to do. And supply chain, the field where we do our forecasting is about meeting the demand. Well, at the aggregate level, it looks good, but in fact, at the real level, you don't, you will not have the right product to supply to your customer. So that's a problem. So that's an example of how aggregation can really uh, give you the wrong picture. Yeah, understood. You know, in the blog, you hit on several common mistakes when measuring and reporting accuracy at too high a level. Which ones do you find most troubling? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I, I talked about people doing things in dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. I talked about people doing things at too high a level. What I find the most uh, troublesome is when I, and maybe because it happens the most often, is when I go to a prospect and I ask them the question, hey, what's your forecast accuracy? And, you know, I get a number like 98%. And very often what they're doing is that they are calculating that at the business level. And at the business level, obviously, like I just pointed out, all the pluses and minuses have canceled out. Uh, and you can report that the forecast accuracy is very high. Yet the very reason that they are talking to me is that is because they have supply chain issues. And one reason people have supply chain issues is because they have bad forecast. Not the only reason, but certainly one of the more common reasons. So if you are calling a vendor like myself for demand planning project, and at the same time, at some level in your organization, there is a belief that your forecast accuracy is 98% because, well, you have measured the forecast accuracy at too high a level, that bugs me a lot because it almost uh, it makes the case that it's there in plain sight and people are willfully not seeing the problem that they have in the way they are uh, measuring their forecast accuracy, which is at too high a level. Now, sometimes this is done for political reasons, and I understand that, but still, that's the, you know, you ask the question, what bugs me the most, and that has to be it. Fantastic. You know, when you are working with planners that are trying to improve their accuracy, do you have any favorite tips that you share with them? 
Well, uh, in the context of measuring the accuracy, absolutely. I, you know, I advise them that first of all, you understand what it is that go you are going to use the forecast for and use that to determine the right level at which you want to measure the accuracy. So as an example, if you are in the business of assemble to order or some kind of you practice some kind of postponement, well, then you might not want to measure it at the product package level. Maybe it's better for you to measure it at the bulk level or stored product level. Um, if you have uh, products that are uh, such that, you know, the logistics costs are very high based on where the, you have to make them. Well, that means that you have to worry about location. So you need to then do things at the product location level. So my main thing with people is, and I mentioned, I do mention this in the blog, is that depending on what it is that you are going to use the forecast for, take five minutes, think through it, and that will give you the answer. It should emerge on its own that what is the right level of at which you should measure the forecast accuracy given the ultimate business purpose that you are trying to achieve through that. And if you do that properly, that will generate the most value out of your forecasting process. Fantastic. Ajit, thanks so much for sharing your time today. We certainly appreciate you discussing your most recent blog with us and sharing a few inside planning tips. I'd like to thank Absolutely. everyone for watching. We look forward to picking up the conversation the next time right here on our Kiva Spotlight. Thanks again, Sujit. Thank you, Jeff. Have a great day.